I'm Piers Lane. I'm the Artistic Director of the Sydney International Piano Competition, which we now nickname the Sydney. And I'm also the non-voting chair of the jury. And today I'm speaking with one of the jury members, Catherine Stott. On the opening gala of the concert, I asked all of the jury members to play, which is a pretty tough thing for them to do. You know, many of them have arrived after the competitors from far-flung places like the UK or Germany or Switzerland. They have to get over jet lag in double quick time and get ready and play in front of all these young geniuses and all the piano files in Australia and their fellow jurors. So it's a tough call. But Kathy and I played Rachmaninoff's second suite, the last two movements for two pianos, which is a more comfortable thing to do. And I have known Kathy and about Kathy since 1978 because our mutual teacher, Professor Kendall Taylor at the Royal College of Music in London, was at dinner at my parents' house when Kathy was playing in the Leeds International Piano Competition that year. And he was terribly keen to know if I had heard anything about how things were going. As it happened, I hadn't. But the next year, when I became a student at the Royal College of Music, the first day was a concert, a recital, by Kendall Taylor playing the Appassionata Sonata and three of his uh, wonderful ex-students, Jan Latham Koenig, now a famous conductor, and Enlok Wu, Chinese pianist, and one Catherine Stott. And I still remember to this day, over 40 years later, her playing the Valet Doberman of Liszt with such personal passion and beauty of sound. So I'm so thrilled that all these years later, Kathy is on the jury this year. I've asked her in 2016 and 2020, and she's always been doing other things, but finally we've captured her. So <laughs> welcome, Kathy. <laughs> Thanks so much, Piers. It's really nice to be here. I mean, first of all, I love being in Australia. Sydney is one of my favourite cities. Um, and to be on this wonderful jury, I mean, we're, we're speaking now after we've had day one, and it's just so exciting to hear these young musicians. It is. Thrilled. Yeah, well, you've done a lot of talking about the Leeds competition, for mm. instance. You've been asked by the BBC to commentate mm. during the rounds. Um, have you enjoyed doing that? And do you feel very different being a juror? Yeah, it's quite different. At the last Leeds competition, um, I, I, I was working with a presenter. And so it's quite a different feel because you don't have the responsibility of what's going to happen. Right. So, I mean, you know, through this, I'm making copious amounts of notes because I want to really be able to remember what everybody has been doing. Um, when you're commentating, you're just kind of giving a overview to the to the viewers and kind of introducing the personalities and perhaps giving some insight into what it might be like to play that piece or the repertoire or their programs that kind of thing but now that it's about decisions you yeah. know or gathering information uh, and seeing where it leads so we're very much at the outset at this point for sure. And I remember reading years ago about Dame Fanny Waterman, who was the artistic director of, and founder of the Leeds International Piano Competition, one of the great competitions of the world. People asked her what she was looking for in competitors. And her answer was that she knew when she heard it. Would you agree with that? Oh, I think you, you know instantly when, I mean, I've often noticed, you know, sitting amongst the jury, we just stop what we're doing. You know, where uh, you stop writing, you stop looking at the score, you just like, oh, wow, okay, that's different. And somebody just takes you. And with other, with other people, you sometimes think, oh, okay, they're maybe just finding their way a little bit, and then it develops as the program goes on. So, you know, what I really like, Piers, about this is the fact that you've got two prelim uh, preliminary rounds. And that's great. It's really nice to feel you've got that opportunity to just con maybe consolidate your thoughts, maybe give people another opportunity who were perhaps a bit nervous, hear some more repertoire and see if they develop and also see if people have learnt anything from their experience of playing in this wonderful hall. We're very lucky here in Sydney to have the Verbruggen Hall in the Sydney Conservatorium of Music because it's a friendly hall, isn't yeah, it, to play really in. Nice. It's got warmth. You feel you can float the sound if you want to. It's not going to drop off the edge of the stage. 
One thing that is different with this competition is that the competitors are required to play different pianos for the different rounds. They're actually prescribed. A piano brand name is drawn out of a hat when the order of competitors is announced in May. They're too decided by lottery. And then the first 10 competitors played the Fazioli because it was the first out of the hat this year. Now, at the moment, we're on the second day of the preliminaries and competitors are playing Kauai. At a certain point today, after 11 have played the Kauai, 11 will play the Steinway. Then when they progress to the next round, they'll move on to the next piano in their alphabetical list. So those who played Steinway will play Fazioli. And then those who played Fazioli, Kauai, etc. And so that reflects real life, doesn't it? You know, yeah. when we turn up to do concerts all over the world, we're presented with a piano in a hall that may be strange to us. We have a couple of hours usually to rehearse in the afternoon. Absolutely. You adjust immediately. You have to feel out the piano and sink, uh, find out how it will respond to you and what you can do to make it do its best in that particular hall. So it's an extra test, isn't it? It, it is. And the pianos are very, very different because one of the great things about doing that opening jury uh, concert was that we all got the opportunity to play on these pianos. And even if we weren't playing on that brand, we actually just went around and, and played a few notes on all of them so that we understood what the challenges might be, what the personalities of the pianos might be. But you're right, um, as a pianist, we really have to adapt every single time. Even if we have a kind of favorite make of piano, they're still all different, aren't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. People always ask, what's your favorite piano? And they expect you to say, you know, a name. But I always say, they're the same family, but every instrument Ex is different, exactly. you know, and they exactly. all respond differently. And yeah. they respond differently to different halls. Yeah. You know, and so different humidities in the same hall. Exactly. You know, one day, it can feel a particular way. I've often found this in recording sessions. You, you save something that's got, you know, a lot of fast repeated notes necessary or something and just pray that the day you record that, it's not going to be humid and suddenly it feels all spongy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think even when we were um, rehearsing for the, uh, our gala concert, the, we said, oh, the piano has felt different from one day to the next. Yes. So, you know, it is very much a reflection of real life. Yeah. Um, and I think what's great is that all competitors um, get to play two pianos, whatever happens, you know, so they're, they're not just on one and then maybe somebody else had to play three yeah. and then eventually they will move to three pianos. Yeah, that's great. Kathy, one of the things you're loved and famous for all over the world is playing with Yo-Yo Ma, the yeah. cellist. You've done that for decades and um, this competition demands that people play chamber music as well. Mm -hmm. In the semi-final, all of the contestants have to prepare both a violin sonata and a cello sonata and encores for those instruments as well. And they will be told when they learn that they're one of the 12 semi-finalists that they will play either the violin sonata or the cello sonata. They have to have both ready. Pretty tough, that. And then they rehearse with Andrew Haveron, the leader of the Sydney Symphony. I think he was a prize winner in the Queen Elizabeth violin competition uh, ages ago, and he's a, a Brit and used to working hard. He'll be <laughs> both playing those six sonatas, uh, and there are six different choices of very big sonatas, and he'll be leading all of the concertos in the Sydney Opera House as well, so he'll be running hither and thither, <laughs> but he's up for it. And the cellist will be Li Wei Chin, one of the great Australian cellists. And um, Kathy, you're, you're one of the most experienced of all the jurors at doing everything. You've played concertos, you commission contemporary works from composers, you're still doing that now and learning these fiendishly difficult scores. <laughs> I must and be you crazy. Play, you, well, we know you are crazy, but <laughs> uh, playing with Yo-Yo with and yep. many others in festivals yeah. as well. How important do you think it is these days that other people are like you, uh, that you can do everything? Well, look, the more you do, the, the more varied life is. And mm. I think as, as a pianist, it can be a very solitary life and it's so good to kind of hear how other instruments are sounding and learn how to breathe in the way other musicians might, you know, play, the way they kind of move their bow or breathe down the instrument or for singers. Uh, and just try and emulate some of these sounds also. But it's just so wonderful to collaborate uh, and not feel just totally alone. I mean, you know, some string players will 
um, go and play Bach suites and that's their moment and other works of course and be on stage on their own but we could spend our whole lives being on our own and if we were a recitalist let's say so mm -hmm. it's really wonderful and I think it's great to have that round in competition I know when I was in the leads I probably propelled myself to the finals because it was chamber music in the semi-final and I, I remember I was the only one that actually enjoyed that round. Really? Yeah. Was it a piano quintet or? It was actually. It was um, just two movements of the Brahms um, piano quintet. That's what I chose to do. Um, but it was very, it, it was very fast put together. But I wasn't phased by that. And I remember other people were, were, were a bit distressed about having to Well, do you that. had been a student from childhood, I think, of the Yehudi Menuhin School in Cobham in Surrey in England. And so I guess that culture of chamber music mm. was intrinsic to that education. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So that was in my bones. But I think it's going to be really interesting because the pianists are not going to be suddenly just responsible for themselves. We're going to be really looking to see how they react with, um, you know, the the two musicians, what they give to them and not just to be following them. That's what I'll be looking for, you know, to see when they're playing sonatas, it's really a two-way conversation, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. But I also requested that they play an encore mm. after the sonata, ones that Andrew Haveron and Li Wei Chin uh, would play in concert as encores. And I think that may be even more telling to the jurors yes than the sonatas in a way about how they listen, how they breathe, as you were saying, and phrase with people and support them. And if they can take second place and be discreet when necessary and, you know. Exactly, exactly. And how they judge the balance, um, you know, coming from being soloists in the first couple of rounds. So uh, I think it's going to be very, very interesting. I mean, you know, we don't want to see somebody shrinking into being a little mouse. No. But also we don't want somebody to kind of override the whole proceedings. And um, at that stage of the competition, they can choose which of the three brands of piano they will accompany on or uh, collaborate on. Uh, as they'll be able to do for the Sydney Opera House, they might choose two different brands to play uh, Concerto 1800 and, and prior. Or for the ones after 1800, they might choose two different instruments. So it will be fascinating. And their decisions will influence the jury as well, just seeing how they understand their own art. <clears throat> do they do they have very much opportunity um, to rehearse? Do they just get one rehearsal with each person? No, they get, you mean with the uh, yeah. chamber music? Yes. They'll have two rehearsals. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, That's it plenty. is good. That's yeah. more than enough. <laughs> In real life, In for real sure. life, yeah. But it's fascinating to me that you remember so clearly your experience in the Leeds from 1978. It's going back a little bit now. It's going back a long way, Piers. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> I have to say we're exactly the same age. <laughs> so, yes, it's going back. But these competitions influence us for the rest of our lives, they don't do. they? They do. <clears throat> they live with you. And I was saying, <clears throat> excuse me, that the competitors don't realise too that the people they're meeting now will be their colleagues for the rest of their lives. I, yeah, and I hope they'll be friends too because, mm. you know, they're in this together. I mean, it, of, of course in some very unnatural way they have to compete with each other but you know we're we're all musicians mm. we're all trying to tell our stories so mm. i i hope they'll come away with fond memories thank you kathy so much pleasure sweetie mm -hmm.